St. Patrick Breakwater Project makes progress. This project, Mr. Speaker, will impact positively on job creation and income generation. <coughs> I refer, Mr. Speaker, in particular, to the most recent of our major project, the St. Patrick or the Satez Breakwater Project. Details to this story and more in the National Report. With the National Report, I'm Leslie and Johnson Cornwall. For years, residents of Sutez sat back and watched the beachfront disappear as the heavy waves lashed against the land, wreaking havoc on the tongue, their properties, and damaging their small boats. Now they can breathe a sigh of relief as the Keith Mitchell-led administration commenced yet another project under its Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Program to remedy the problem. It's called the St. Patrick Breakwater Project, a $4.6 million project which will see the construction of a 1,500-foot breakwater structure from the shore out to the sea and towards the old jetty. The project started in July 2016. GIS paid a visit to the site on Wednesday to see the progress of the project. During his contribution to the 2017 budget, Parliamentary Representative for St. Patrick West, the Honorable Anthony Boson, highlighted the importance of the project. Mr. Speaker, this project should have been on stream over eight years ago because the Exim Bank of China agreed to provide the financing for the breakwater and for the development of a marina project. And that is why I'm talking about continuity, Mr. Speaker, because when the then administration took over in 2008, they abandoned that project on the principle that it is too big for St. Patrick, Mr. Speaker. See where continuity comes into play? As a result of not doing that project, the lower part of Satel suffered serious erosion, threatening the existence of buildings, roads, Mr. Speaker. I want to commend our Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, notwithstanding the difficult financial situation, he went to Satel and he saw what was happening, and he said, we have to do something about the project, Mr. Speaker. I know that project is on stream, $4.8 million. We spoke with some business owners and members of the public who shared their views on the project. It will mean much more access to the, to the Grenadines and more access to Sotars, which, as, you, as we agreed, needs livening up a bit, and also more work for the locals. Well, I think perhaps the breakwater the, is the catalyst, will be the catalyst, because then there is access to the water up here, which at the moment there isn't. Uh, and so it will open up all sorts of opportunities up here, and I think all sorts of development will follow. So, we're, yeah, we are very excited. I think it's a very good idea. Um, it's something that's, that we need a lot. Okay, as you can see, well, we, we don't have a coastline again. Growing up as a little boy, I knew we had a lot of sand. People just saw this come on the beach and be They can't even sit anywhere on the beach now. Um, from ever since up here has been a uh, kind of choppy area, being as we in the north of the island. And the brick wall here, Bill Indy, Believe me, it's going to really, really come in handy. Four major business projects are scheduled to begin in 2017 that will benefit the people in the parish of St. David. The projects, which will generate employment for some, were outlined by Minister for Economic Development and Trade, the Honorable Oliver Joseph, during his recent contribution to the 2017 budget. A poultry farm and processing center in Laura. Opening up of the agro-processing plant in La Sagesse. Opening, building, construction of a recycling plant in La Calum. And the building of a factory to bottle water in La Sagesse. These are four conform. You have in Laura, you already have the steel frame coming. For the two plants, in the one in La Calum, and the other at La Sagesse, they already order it. The investor said it would be prefab, so it wouldn't take too long to, to set up. And they want to start in January. So these are four business ventures that will provide jobs for the people at St. David's. This is the National Report. More news after the break. The Aedes aegypti mosquito spreads the dengue, chikungunya, and Zika viruses. It only needs a small amount of water to breed. Check for stagnant water regularly. Buckets including the rim should be drained and kept dried. 
avoid using flower pot plates, but if you do, ensure they're emptied every two days. Get rid of water that settles in potted plants. Dish rack trays should be emptied daily. If your pipe leaks, throw away the collected water and rectify the leakage promptly. Mosquitoes also breed around the roots of plants. Change the water, rinse the roots and scrub the vase to remove mosquito eggs daily. A policy articulated by the government to develop its export sector will soon be implemented. The National Export Strategy for 2017 to 2021 was updated with assistance from the Commonwealth Secretariat. Economic Development and Trade Minister Oliver Joseph says they will work with stakeholders like the GCIC, GIDC and the Tourism Authority to successfully implement the strategy. This strategy will be implemented in 2017 because we need to increase in our export because the balance on trade is not in our favor. We import almost everything and export very little. To earn more foreign exchange, and to reduce the amount of inputs we need to increase on our export. So this revised export strategy will help us in this regard. Security will be beefed up at the Morris Bishop International Airport following its investment in 30 cadets, the largest to be trained in one session. Details from Janelle Hamlet. You are our ambassadors on the floor. And you are also our ambassadors to the international world. Words spoken by Wendy Francis Williams, General Manager of the Grenada Airports Authority. The General Manager was addressing 30 cadets who, after eight weeks of aviation security training, graduated as security officers at the Morris Bishop International Airport on Friday. Part of the mission of the Grenada Airports Authority is to provide safe and secure airport facilities through a highly skilled workforce. Mrs. Williams stressed the significance of the post. As a security officer, you are empowered with the task of guarding a port of entry to our country. That's how important it is. 30 is the largest number of cadets to graduate from any one session thus far. But Desmond Richard, manager of security at the Morris Bishop International Airport, also speaking of the role of the officers, says it was a crucial investment. In a time when monies are very scarce, and I mean scarce, and flights have not yet been significantly increased, the board of directors and managers must be applauded for approving such a large intake. And that should tell you too how important you are to ensuring that this place become the safest and most secure airport in the region that will encourage uh, flights and, 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 and passengers to come to our shows. Apart from aviation-related areas, the cadets were trained in other fields such as drug identification, first aid, customer service, and conflict management. A number of security and meteorological officers were also recognized and promoted at Friday's event. For The National Report, I am Janelle Hamlet. And that's The National Report. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson, Cornwall.